Hello and welcome back. And have you tried to buy a hard drive for your NAS recently? Man alive, that AI bubble is just sucking up all the terabytes in the room. And right now the likes of Seagate, WD and Toshiba seem to be really ramping up those price points. Ultimately, when it comes to the hard drive technology and the evolution and the technology behind it, there's increasing the capacity but keeping the same size... It's all getting much of a muchness, and right now at the end of 2025, if you're trying to buy a drive between Seagate or WD, they all seem a bit much of a muchness, and the margins between them are getting awfully blurry. So, today I want to compare these two. Whether it is that you're scaling up an existing solution, or you're going to buy your first NAS and you don't want to F this up out the gate, today we're going to go through these two brands, and hopefully by the end, you'll know which one you're going to opt for. But a few disclaimers straight off the bat. Number one, we're not going to talk about SSDs for now. So we're not going to talk about any of these simply because we want to focus on hard drives and big old capacity drives. Second, we're not going to mention Toshiba that much. They are going to be mentioned later on. And by the way, they have a larger market share than I thought, but still nonetheless, they're not going to make the cut in today's video. And finally, I know you're wondering, I don't know why Seagate called these Skyhawk. Surely all hawks are for the sky, right? But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself there. When it comes to buying hard drive for your NAS system, these days, there's pretty much only two horses in the race, WD Red and Seagate Iron Wolf. They also have their own pro series of drives designed for larger than 12 TB capacities that scale up to pretty decent heights. I will say that the Seagate currently in terms of NAS have the largest capacity available at 30 TB and over recent years have seemingly rolled out the larger capacities first. Both brands have been investing in different kinds of um, magnetic recording technology where they've been able to expand the amount of data they can put on each platter inside a disc. Now those discs inside are pretty bloody important because these are where you're going to be leveraging the amount of data you can hold versus the amount of power being consumed against the amount of noise being generated. We could talk about thermals, but it's not quite as important in hard drives as it is on SSDs in most consumer NAS systems. You have to get quite large before heat becomes something of an issue when it comes to storage drives in of themselves. But one of the things that really surprised me when I was setting up the script for this video is that in terms of market share, I genuinely believed that Seagate hold the market share, but they don't. Right now, according to a Forbes article that was recently updated for this quarter, alongside a block and files comparison uh, of pricing, and uh, availability across the whole spectrum and buyers, different marketplaces and deployments, WD hold around 42% of the market share and Seagate has 40%. And the people we mentioned earlier on, Toshiba, they hold 18% of the market share. Now, a large part of Toshiba having that part of the market share is to do with diversification towards external devices and OEM level deployments. And indeed, brands like Synology and Hyperscale and Unified Storage that rebrand their drives. Unify is another great example. So Toshiba, a lot of the time you might be using their drives and not even know it. They're not as loud out there as WD and Seagate in terms of their own IP. But this isn't a seminar on investors meeting, you want the practical values. Well, both of these brands, if we focus on the non-pro series first, so that's under 12 TB, because both brands have now separated everything from low to 12 TB in the standard class and 12 TB and higher pro series class. There's a little bit of overlap there as well. Um, so between the two of them, it will come as no surprise that the messaging is a lot clearer from WD, always has done. They've got that, I hate seagulls. They've got that whole color thing with red meaning NAS, black meaning gaming, blue meaning standard desktop. We're going to focus just on NAS, but you generally find with WD the messaging is clearer. More so from that, when it comes to availability between these two brands, WD, weirdly, between these two, these massive billion whatever companies, WD has its own retail store. It lists and sells through multiple third parties, resellers, distributors, and more, but they have their own retail outlet where you can buy from the WD store. You know, that one that got hit by the WD security incident a little while ago. But Seagate, on the other hand, don't 
don't sell from their own outlet. They use those resellers and distributors. Now, why that's important is, although on the whole, Seagate drives are generally cheaper per terabyte, depending on where you look around in the world, there is a bit of wiggle room, but generally on the whole, Seagate is the more affordable drive in almost every other outlet except for WD Zone. They have their own and therefore they can be a lot more, let's say creative with that pricing there. In and outside of seasonal events, if you're gonna buy a WD drive, you will always find it cheaper on their own outlet than anywhere else. Whereas Seagate is more affordable and more widely available at that price point everywhere else in the world with the WD outlet being selective in a number of regions for its availability at that pricing. So remember, on the whole, Seagate is cheaper per terabyte, but WD is cheaper in their own store. So check if that store is available in your region. Now it's when we switch into the pro class drives that you find that the pricing suddenly gets way, way messier. So with WD, when you go into the WD Red Pro series and then in the data center level, your WD Gold and their own branded Ultra Star series of drives, then the pricing goes cocoa for cocoa pops. It is all over the place. There is no consistency. They also have numerous SKUs running side by side, SKUs, SKUs, product IDs, running at the same time. And the consequence is it is incredibly, and I would argue by design, difficult to track that price. And with some models only available in minimum order quantities. Now with Seagate, Seagate has the Pro Series, as mentioned, with the larger capacities, but it also has Exos, it has Mac Series, it has Nitro Series, but it's very consistent in its pricing with the exception of some of their Nitro SSDs, and even Fire Cuda too. The result is, and you can see what I mean about the clear color palette versus this bizarre naming casplatter, uh, seriously, Skyhawk, all hawks fly, Seagate. But nonetheless, the pricing is way more consistent across the board with Seagate, with that availability and pricing region to region, and you're being a great deal more steady. So on the whole, Seagate is the more affordable drive, and it's definitely the more stable price drive between the two of them. But in some regions, WD and their own store, you can get a billy bargain. Now, I'm not gonna have a lot of truck in this video with a lot of marketing blurb. Agile Array, Nasware, these things from WD, and Seagate themselves have got a bunch of marketing blurb splattered all over their website where they're basically saying why our drives are the best. And a lot of the time, it's the same technology renamed, slightly tweaked in different firmware iterations across both drives, and ultimately you, the end user, unless you're at scale, aren't really gonna know or feel the difference. However, I do need to single out one particular thing, rescue recovery services. The Seagate series, and we talked about on the channel before, roll in with data recovery services on their drives. It's the big R listed on the middle of the drive there. Depending on the uh, class of drive you go for, in the NAS class, you'll either get two or three years of data recovery. Now, once you have multiple drives in a RAID, data recovery, because let's face it, RAID isn't a backup, is questionable. How much data you can retrieve, and indeed the data recovery services sit at around 90 odd percent. And I'm gonna do a return to this subject in 2026, by the way, but, the data recovery services there are still nonetheless an extra a fallback. And given the drives are already a lower price per terabyte, that's why I thought regardless of us not touching on any of the other stuff, I really wanted to focus on that rescue recovery services because it is valuable and it is a lovely little extra being thrown in there. I'm not gonna talk about durability. I'm not gonna talk about mean times between failure because across both of these platforms, standard class has 180 um, terabyte workload, Pro Series class has 300 TB workload and Enterprise class has 550 terabytes workload. They both have that, they have the same warranty periods attached to them. And ultimately between them, performance wise, it's all getting very similar once you reach that point of 7200 RPM, 256 megabyte cache. It's all the same, but the rescue recovery there needed to be singled out. But, 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 before you start thinking it's getting a little bit rosy for the SG over here, I'll tell you what, they ain't half noisy. <laughs> Thank you. 
regardless of which capacity you go for, unless you go real small, 2TB, after that point, you will always notice that the Iron Wolf drives are noisier. Now, trying to compare that across both of these brands, as hopefully you can see with the chart on screen, has taken me quite a while. Even the AI was no use to you, being, I'm afraid. Um, but with that, both of these drives, uh, both of these brands provide multiple instances of 4TB, uh, multiple 8s and 10s and 12TBs as they have pulled forward and pulled back different SKUs, playing around with the numbers of platters, playing around with the speed and RPM of the discs with WD, having flexible RPMs, by the way, between 5400 and 7200 on some of their lines. You may also have noticed so far, I've not touched on WD Red SMR drives. Don't worry, we'll get onto that later in the video. Ultimately, between the two of them, Seagate Iron Wolf drives tend, even if you go by the manufacturer's own pages or you look at some of the tests we've done on the channel, they're just noisier. And they spin up, they spin down, they're clunkier. They're not bad, they're just noisier overall. And WD drives tend to be lower ambient vibration, which again, on scale, a four, a six, an eight bay, or going all the way up to a 60 bay rack becomes noticeable. But it doesn't stop there, because not only a Seagate drives noisier, they consume more power as well. Now, that won't come as a big surprise when you're thinking clunks and clicks have got to be generated by something. But regardless of whether you look at the standard class of drives or the Pro Series class of drives between both of these brands, and you factor in the variations of Model ID with different spec on board, the Seagate drives whether it is idle or whether it is active and there is a little bit of leeway with hibernation and standby and the way both of these brands measure their drives but on idle on active the Seagate drive just consume more power on the standard class drives comparing all of those model ids 10 of the wd drives there in the comparison had lower power consumption over their seagate counterparts and six of the seagates and that was factoring in some unique ones that weren't even available so they're kind of no score draws the minute you look into the pro class drives that's when you find that comparing all of the pro class drives across all of the capacities and variations 27 of the wd drives were lower in power consumption versus just three to four of the Seagates and there's ties in between them. Ultimately, between the two of them, once you have lots of drives, I know the old what don't matter for a lot of people, but some regions of the world, our energy costs are going cocoa for cocoa pops. And I just wanna know that if I get a larger system, the extra 10, 20, 30 watts being consumed by my drives can add up over the days, weeks, months, or years. So just keep that in mind, noisier, consumes more power, but still lower price overall, there's some serious math calculations on your wallet to consider. Now, I am sure some of you have been watching this video waiting for those three little letters, SMR, Shingle Magnetic Recording. That was, forgive the vulgarity, when WD shit the bed and did a complete disaster of PR, rolling out drives that use shingle magnetic recording inside their drives, which are not good for sustained operations and rebuild ops when drives are very full, ultimately resulting in drives that were not suitable for certain NAS deployments. They messed it up, it went to court action, I would say they got off pretty lightly. Now, the reason I'm not bringing it up is, we talk about the WD Red series with WD Red Plus, an important distinction. Make sure you buy WD Red Plus or Red Pro, never standard WD Red. But C8 themselves aren't completely blameless, notwithstanding the 1.5 TB drive debacle when they rolled out these drives with a horrific um, a durability, uh, failure rate, I should say. On top of that, this year alone, we saw lots of reused Seagate drives being having, having their firmware modded that have been used in cheer farming being resold into the market. And although by no means was Seagate anywhere involved in that process from what we've seen online, they still should have had a much tighter handle on that distribution, something that a lot of users might argue would have been better if they controlled the retail outlet in some cases. Bottom line, the reason I'm not gonna focus on SMR or those hard drives that were being missold is because I think these are smaller incidents that 
Once these brands are caught out on and they have to do something about, you, the right now, have to make a decision about your storage. If these things impact your decision, more, more power to you. And moreover, if you were to put a gun to my head and say which one of these brands I personally use, I use a lot more Seagate drives now than I use WD drives. A lot of the time it's because the large capacities roll out earlier and because of that rescue recovery service. WD's SMR drives, that doesn't play that much into my decision, but it may play more into yours. I still recommend WD drives to people, but on the whole, in most cases, Seagate ends up being the drives that I recommend between these two on balance. It really is a 55-45. It isn't a complete swing. But I think we can all agree, all hawks can fly. This name makes no sense. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, there are links in the description, not only to an article, to go through a lot of the details, a lot more of the specifics that I've covered in this video, but moreover, links to get hold of these drives for yourself. So if you found this video helpful, and if you want to support what we do, and if you were gonna to go to the stores in the description anyway, please use those links in order to get the drives for your NAS. Doing so will allow you to passively and at no additional cost support what we do via commissions that we get via those affiliated links. Again, it's just me and Eddie doing this. It allows us to keep doing what we do. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.